This problem was written uh, back in 2002 when the Olympics, the Winter Olympics, were nearby. My wife and youngest son went down. My, my oldest son was actually working as uh, one of those helpful people from BYU that was uh, helping to run the event. Anyway, uh, the only event they could get into was the bobsled, and they came back. My son was so excited, I wrote this, uh, this exam question. In this case, we have bobsleds being launched by a spring. They go down a frictionless ramp, and they try to get as much air as possible, see how far they can uh, go down the landing field. Now, the first question was only worth two points. And it's the same question that you had at the beginning of every single homework problem. What's the VARIC? Zero. Zero. It's got to be zero. And that gets you one of the two points. The other point is giving the justification. And remember, VARIC, it's only external VARIC we care about. And if we draw a free body diagram for that uh, bobsled, uh, the Earth is part of our system, so that we can talk about the gravitational potential energy. Uh, so this is an internal force. This is the only force we have to worry about. The only external force. And it is always perpendicular to the motion. Now you see that I just violated one of the most fundamental rules of free body diagrams. I put something that's not a force on the diagram. I will burn in heck. Uh, I'm sorry. But it doesn't matter where we look in this motion, the normal force is always perpendicular to the way the, the cart is moving, uh, the bobsled is moving. And so I get zero there. Now this is where it gets easy, uh, interesting rather. Um, we're told that when the bobsled gets here at B, it's going 50 meters per second, over 100 miles an hour. And the question is, what's the spring constant of that spring if we cocked it four meters to get started? Now, this is an energy problem, so I have to decide uh, what kinds of energy I have. Well, I always ask myself the same three questions. Is anything with mass moving? No, not yet. Is anything up off the floor? Yes, if I choose the lowest point in the problem to be my floor, then it's 120 meters up off the floor. The last question is, are any springs stretched or compressed? Oh yeah. Then I go to my final event and I ask the same questions. Is anything with mass moving? Yeah, 50 meters per second. Is anything up off the floor? Yeah, 20 meters up off the floor. Are, are any springs stretched or compressed? Not anymore. So the buckets that are filled are gravitational and spring to begin with. Since there's no external bear, the energy is conserved. And now that energy is kinetic and potential gravitational. Now, this very quickly turns into math. Uh, I write which buckets I have at, at the initial and the final locations, and then I put in the formulas for those buckets. Now you'll notice that everything's in black except for K, and that's because I know everything <coughs> except for K. They're all knowns. Quick question, can I just uh, cancel the mass? I got mass on the left, I got mass on the right, can I cancel the mass? No or heck no? Heck no. Heck no. It's not in every term. I got it there, I got it there, I got it there, but not there. Okay, so I cannot cancel the mass. I plug in all the things I know, and there's just one unknown. Now if that just looks scary to you, if that looks like you could never figure that out, this next exam is going to be a nightmare. If that's just algebra to you, and algebra is easy, you're going to be fine. The answer is 25,000 newtons for each meter. Check to see if your neighbor got that, please.
Okay. We're asked to find the acceleration of the bobsled at point B. Now, at B, the bobsled is not speeding up. It has been speeding up, but not now, not at B. At B, the bobsled is not slowing down. It will be slowing down in just a moment. But at B, it's in transition. It was speeding up, and it's about to slow down. That's the point where we take our foot off the gas and move it to the brake. At that point, the only kind of acceleration we have is turning. And it's in a circular <coughs> path, and so that's going to be centripetal acceleration, V squared over R. The V is given as, as 50 meters per second. The radius is given as 100 meters. That gives me an acceleration of 25 meters per second per second. Now, when this was on an exam, uh, people said, well, it would be 25 meters per second per second, uh, but really not, because it's not speeding up or slowing down. No, this really is. I mean, this is a big acceleration, and you feel it. When you hit the gas, you're thrown backwards in your car. When you hit the brake, you're thrown forwards in your car. When you feel, uh, when you turn the steering wheel real quick, you're, turn, you're thrown the other way. Now in this case, these uh, Jamaican bobsled uh, team, they feel it because they are headed down and suddenly the bobsled starts going up. They keep going down and it feels like they're being crushed into their sled. They feel like they each ate 27 Big Macs, okay? Their apparent weight becomes huge, okay? Now, we want to find that apparent weight for the whole bobsled. If we draw a free body diagram for that bobsled, it had better scream up. And that's because there's an acceleration up. How loud should the scream be? Well, that's given by F net equals MA, where the mass is 80 kilograms, the acceleration is 25 meter per second per second up. That means this diagram has to scream up by 20,000 newtons. That's quite a scream. Now the weight force is just mg, that's just 8,000 newtons. So how big does that normal force have to be on the bobsled? Tell your neighbor real quick. My scream up has to be 20,000. Okay, I hope everyone said 28,000 newtons. Good. Okay. Now, you've noticed that every single homework problem that you were assigned for today, and both of the problems on the tutorial homework that was due yesterday, had circular motion involved. And that's because these energy problems give us a really good opportunity to, pardon the pun, circle back on rotation of circular motion. Okay, so you can, <laughs> pretty much bet on the fact that you're going to have a problem like that on your exam, one that involves circular motion. Now the last part of this problem asks how fast will the Jamaican team be traveling right before they land on the uh, landing field. And again, this is an energy problem. If I look at the energy at B, they're moving, so there's kinetic energy. They're up off the floor, so there's gravitational energy. The spring is neither stretched nor compressed, so there's no spring energy. That total energy is going to be conserved if we ignore air resistance. Remember, it's a frictionless ramp. And now, if we choose the height of that landing field as zero, all of the energy is in the kinetic bucket. There's no gravitational energy. I write a formula for each of those buckets. What about now? Can I cancel the mass? Yes. yes, every term has mass, so I can cancel it. I solve for the one unknown, and sure enough, it's going to hurt. 54 meters per second. Going pretty fast. Now, I assume that everyone watched Disney's classic movie, Cool Runnings, so that you know why I'm using the Jamaican team. Okay. Jamaica's got a bottle of tea. Okay. 
Any questions on that problem? That is the energy problem. We dress it up different ways, but it's always that. And it's almost embarrassing because you saw that in two steps it stops being physics and suddenly becomes algebra. When we take this next exam, it's partially going to be an algebra exam. I'm ashamed of that, but I can't find a way around it. Okay? I imagine myself as a math teacher and it just gives me nightmares.